found out about the fishing when I met my husband Donald in 1964. But anyway, Donald's heart was in the sea. So Donald's dad said, right, go down to the shop at the harbour at Junior and get your sea boots and oil skins. And he eventually started because someone at that point had left the boat. It was a hard life for them because there was no, no many facilities at all on the boat. They had a, 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 a cabin and that was it. We never knew every week what wages we would have to live off of. If the men didn't catch any fish, the wages reflected that. So when the, we had a good time, we had to save and keep money by to live off of um, and get through the next week. They had, they've had two or three different traumas with her. Um, about four years ago, they were down off Turnbury at night. They were fishing in Donald, my younger son was in watch, when one of these big cargo ships came towards them and Donald had called them up on the radio and there, there was nobody in the wheelhouse. It was just coming towards them. He couldn't get the gear up. So it was really a terribly scary situation and he tried to call the coast guards and eventually, at the last minute, this boat managed to pull away and miss the boys. You know, it would have been a total disaster. So the, the skipper of that boat lost his licence. And I remember one Sunday, a man phoned my husband, Donald, to say that the boat had been sunk in Air Harbour um, in a big cargo ship who unloaded their cargo at the other side of Air Harbour. I had un taken their cargo off. They must have gone to the pub, got in onto their boat. It was, a I can't remember how many hundred feet long. And he had tried to turn it in Air Harbour and didn't make it and went right into the side of the Spesbona and she was almost split in two and, and she sank. And if anybody had been on the boat, they would never have survived it because it was just where Donald's father slept. So it was a big trauma again for them. So they had no boat for about six months and we had no income. We just had to do the best we could. So there's always something, and they've had various other things. Uh, um, in January this year, uh, they were fishing off of Turnbury again, and the weather came up pretty bad. And they got um, wire caught in the propeller. So they had to call the lifeboat out from Girvan and from a Troon to help them. And the Troon one towed them, and the lifeboat from Girvan stayed by the side of them. And I think one member of the crew of the Girvan lifeboat took a heart attack and they had to get the helicopter in to lift him off. But the boys, uh, the boys who were in the lifeboat got a, a, recommend a commendation for the work they did, which, you know, it was just as well, they couldn't do without the lifeboats, They're, you know. So they do such a great service, we just can't be without them. The same as the Fisherman's Mission. You know, there was nothing there, it was just a dismal place. But now Karen and Paula have got the mission sorted out. It's a lifeline for them. I know if they need anything in the boat, they'll phone Karen and Paula and they always manage to help them, put them in the right direction. It's been, you know, a, a great facility for all the fishermen. And you know, you wonder what would these men have done if it hadn't been there? It's just so important to support the fishermen because they give a hundred percent of their time to supply fish to Britain. You know, and it's not just a nine to five job. It's a long, hard slog they have. Donald always said after he retired, he would never have changed his lifestyle. He loved the fishing, regardless of all the traumas that he had gone through. He loved that life, he loved it. <laughs>